Well, 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 what is going on guys? It's Mr. Affleck 9916 and welcome back to Euro Truck Simulator 2. It's been a couple weeks. Obviously, I was on spring break and out of town in uh, New York City for another week. So we are back here to do another delivery. And unfortunately, guys, I was going to upload three episodes over spring break, but the third one, the audio decided not to record. So we are in Dog of Peels. That's where we went to in the last I think we went Vilnius to Dog of Peels. I don't even know. But we went to Dog of Peels and we completed Latvia. So we've now been to every city in Latvia. That's the first country we've done that to. We're going to go back down to uh, Lithuania here and uh, probably do another delivery after that one. We'll see how uh, how long this one ends up taking in terms of real life time. So let's go ahead and hop in our cab today. We are going to be delivering 20 tons of pet food to the BLT in Lithuania in uh, Konas, Lithuania. So let's get this engine started. Up, park and brake off, and off we go. All right, I think I gotta go left here. Yep, yep. Beautiful day on the game. It's been a beautiful day in real life too. We've had a couple days here in Ohio of uh, 70 degree weather, which was wonderful. It was a bit chillier when I was in New York, but I have some crazy stories to uh, tell you guys about in this episode. Alright, turn right here. Oh man, that, that that plant makes it hard to see, doesn't it? Alright, no one's coming. We can just use up both lanes of the road here. And there we go. Okay, my lights are on. So, which button did I make the lights? Uh, there we go. That'll take care of it. I don't even know what triangle is. Hopefully that's nothing, hopefully that's nothing important because I keep hitting it. I think it's just for my brights, so. Alright, go ahead, turn right here. Oh man, they make they make the the streetcar stop. They gotta give him a right away. There's a lot more people on that sucker than there are in this truck. <laughs> I don't think our pet food is necessarily in a rush, unless the uh, cats and dogs of Lithuania are having a hunger crisis. But I would assume that is not the case. <laughs> At least not in this game. All right, we're getting a little bit low on fuel as well. We have. Uh, uh, 850 kilometers left, so we, we can still do a few more deliveries before we gotta fill up, but I will have to do that soon. Gonna have to watch for uh, speeding tickets and all that in this episode, because that has been a consistent, consistent problem. So I just gotta, I gotta be cautious of that going forward. But I hope you guys are having a good uh, weekend. It's good to finally be back. I got back on Monday. I've been so busy this week catching up with classes. I haven't really had time to make any videos, but uh, got one today. I'll definitely have another one tomorrow and probably another one on Sunday as well. However, one of those two is going to be an MLB The Show video because that has just been released this week. I went to GameStop today and picked up my copy. Haven't gotten to even take it out of the plastic shrink wrap yet, <laughs> which shows how much free time I've had, which is not much at all. But I'm pretty excited to play it. I, uh, I really think I want to do a franchise this year. I mean, it's going to be tough being that I'm going to be gone for two months, which kind of gets me into what the, uh, I guess the main topic of today's video is, or I guess, not the main topic, the main topic is going to be what happened over my, my spring break, but, uh, the other big news, the biggest news, I guess, of this video is that I officially am hired with Penn Air to work in Alaska this summer for an internship, so I'm super excited about that. I am reporting for training on May 13th. And I think we have training in Seattle, which I will love, San Jose, and Anchorage. However, the Seattle portion might also be in Anchorage. That's just to be determined. So I'm, I'm obviously hoping that that's in Seattle. But I will uh, find out once they once they finalize the training schedule. June 4th, I will head to King Salmon, Alaska, which is, if you look it up, it's literally in the middle of nowhere. There's no roads in or out. So it is rural, rural, rural western Alaska left towards Riga, but it's very rural rest western Alaska, and uh, I'm pretty excited to live there for two months, because I'll be there from June 4th to August 4th, and then that'll be it. I'll come back to the mainland and uh, kind of just resume life as normal after that. School will start on August 26th for my final year here at Ohio University, so I'm pretty excited for uh, this to all go down, pretty excited for this to all happen. It's going to be a quite incredible opportunity, I think, to to live there, to work there, 
I know that I'm going to be able to check out Katmai National Park for the day, and I'll actually get to watch brown bears eat salmon out of the river, which is going to be super exciting to watch them just catch and eat fish like that. I mean, that's that's something you don't get to see every day in, in the mainland United States or really anywhere in the world besides Alaska, to be honest, or most places, should I say. So I'm pretty stoked for that. Stop at this red light here. I'll also get to uh, possibly head out to Magic Bus 142 from the movie Into the Wild. That is north of Anchorage. Or, yeah, north of Anchorage. And uh, after August 4th, I'll have, you know, I get, I get, I'll have uh, the ability to go to Anchorage and uh, possibly rent a car, drive up, and hike out to the Magic Bus from the movie. If you haven't seen In the Wild, it's uh, basically this movie about this guy who leaves his life behind, leaves his family behind because his parents were abusive, and, and he goes off and tries to find himself in the wild. Unfortunately, the thing about it was he, uh, he was a little dumb, and he didn't prepare himself for living in the wilderness. He ended up dying out there from starvation. So, kind of a sad story, but kind of an inspiring story at the same time, so I, I'd love to be able to get out to that bus. I will obviously uh, not choose to live out there for months and die of starvation. Not that he chose to die, but he chose to live out there for months. I will just head out and probably camp for one night and then uh, head on back. But wherever I go in Alaska, I'm going to have to carry bear spray on me because there are bears everywhere. And they tell us, carry bear bells, bear spray. Basically, uh, be careful of the bears is kind of one of the main messages that they they have consistently told us. Also, apparently the mosquitoes are really bad, so that'll be an interesting thing. I will try to do some vlogs when I'm up there. However, they may not they might not be uploaded until after I get back. And the reason is because of that is because the internet is apparently absolutely atrocious up in Alaska. So, basically, I'm going to have to pass the time by reading books and kind of doing things the old-fashioned way, which I don't mind. I think I'm going to enjoy it. We're all so attached to social media. I'm try One of my goals that I've been trying to do this year is to become a little bit less attached to social media. And uh, I, I really think that, um, you know, this will be an opportunity for me to kind of just get out in nature a little bit, you know, and talk to people the old-fashioned way and not just be on Instagram, checking Instagram every 15 minutes or every five minutes, right? Uh, if I can, you know, only have good internet for a few minutes a day, then I think that would be a happy medium. I mean, there, there still will be some Wi-Fi up there, but apparently it's just dial-up speed, so I don't know if even scrolling through Instagram is going to be possible. I think maybe sending a Snapchat might be the, the most high-tech thing that I'm going to be able to do. Phone service is a little bit better up there. It's not great, but there are, there are landline phones that we can use to make calls. And um, there's also limited cell service up there. So I should be able to still make a phone call to talk to my family, talk to friends, all that kind of stuff, which will be good. I, I will at least look forward to having that. But uh, we'll, we'll kind of see how it ends up going. I think it's going to be a, a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I mean, I don't really think I'll ever end up living in Alaska, aside from these next two months. So I'm pretty excited to... Uh, have this have this in front of me the only the the biggest downside of course is not being able to enjoy my my home life my apartment living in Ohio because I do love it here but uh, I think it's well worth being away for a couple months and I think it's well worth two months of uh, not having any anything to upload I will try to rush record a couple videos and maybe sporadically upload them throughout the summer kind of like I did over spring break I'll, I'll upload them before I go, and then I'll, I'll have, like, a preset date for when they'll actually go live. That way, you know, you guys can have a video every two weeks or something like that. I mean, I'll only really be gone for, like, ten weeks, including training. So it won't be that bad, and once I get back, I'll be able to at least resume the PlayStation videos, because I think maybe I'll bring my PlayStation home, I don't know, because I might just be in Pittsburgh for the rest. So I don't know, I mean, it's possible it could be the whole summer without me actually playing any games, but... It is what it is. We'll obviously, you know, do as much MLB as we can and then return in the fall and continue with more of the series. And continue with more of this series, obviously. There's not a certain time rush to do it. So I guess if you guys are looking forward to the videos over the summer, I can challenge you all to uh, get outside, right? We'll call that we'll call that my challenge of this video. Get outside this summer. You know, get off of YouTube a little bit. 
go hiking and maybe if you live in florida then you're screwed because it's too hot in the summer to go outside but i don't know take a trip up north if you if you have the time and money to do it or go do something you wouldn't normally do right read a book um you know paint a picture learn to play guitar do something do something that doesn't involve the internet or social media and try to do that over the summer that's that's my that's my challenge to all of you guys and hopefully someone will leave a comment at the end of the summer when i start uploading again and they'll say hey i did i did this over the summer and and you inspired me to do it so that would that would be quite a fantastic thing i think because i'll be working a lot there which i guess i didn't even mention that i am hired as a customer service service agent <laughs> that's a tongue twister customer service agent and I will be basically putting tags on luggage and uh, helping customers out to the planes, helping passengers, kind of just doing all that kind of stuff. You know, if someone gets delayed, I think I'll have to like rebook them on another flight and just all that kind of stuff generally. Man, there's a lot of cars coming here. All right, I think we are good now. There we go. Oh, didn't see you there, buddy. Make sure you leave enough room to get around those people. All right, we're good now. What town is this? I have no idea. Utena. So we got passed through this little town to get to the city we're going to. But anyway, uh, I'll be doing a customer service stuff. That'll kind of be the brunt of the job. And I I'm looking forward to that. I, uh, I think it's going to be something new. I applied to be a ramp worker, which is what I did two summers ago. And I love that job. You know, refilling airplanes, loading baggage onto planes, and parking planes, towing planes, marshalling planes. It was so much fun. But this will be a new experience for me. This will be something different. I'll be having to deal with people a lot more. I think the company, when they interviewed me, they they could tell that I had, you know, good social skills, good skills to talk to people. Talking is a thing that I'm good at. I mean, I do do these YouTube videos where I have to basically talk to myself this entire time and hope that you guys actually think it's interesting. So I think, I think that they kind of looked at my skills and probably saw that, you know, to be honest, some of the other kids are definitely more built than me. I'm not, I'm, I'm not weak, but I'm not exactly buff either. I mean, most of the exercise that I do is more focused on cardio. So I'm definitely better for a job that requires, I would say, more running around than it does lifting heavy objects because I'm just not, I'm just not suited to lift heavy objects all that much. I'm going to cut this police officer off because that is a jerk move of me that was not very nice but sorry gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> but I think they saw that and I think they just saw that it would fit me the best and, and I'm actually happier about that because the ramp people don't come back until August 26th and I get to come home August 4th which would be nice because I get to use the rest of that time to kind of explore Alaska a little bit after and also you know it would be nice to have at least a week or two kind of at home uh, you know, in Pittsburgh, get to see family, get to see friends, at least have a little bit of a, uh, summer break. Whoa, what? Oh, I had to go straight through that roundabout. Whoops. I thought I had to go to the right, or to the left. I don't know what in the world I was thinking there. All right, there we go. That ended up working out okay. So that's kind of the plans for the summer. Now it's official. I know I've been talking about it in a lot of the episodes, so now you guys can officially know what to expect going forward. But as I said, MLB the show. I'm gonna I'm gonna play it tonight, and I'm gonna start my my series, whatever it shall be. And I'm pretty I'm pretty freaking stoked to play it. I hope it's good this year. I really hope it's good. <laughs> but I guess I guess we'll see. Almost makes me wish I had the PlayStation Vita. <laughs> Not that they even make that anymore though, because if I had the Vita, it would be considerably nice to be able to play that over the summer and you know work on a road to the show all summer long. But unfortunately, I don't think they're gonna have that. So. I don't think I'll have many handheld games to play. All the iPad games require the internet. I could bring my DS, but I don't really... I don't think I've touched my Nintendo DS in... I don't know, th two years? And I don't think I've seriously played it in about ten. So I don't really think I'd find myself doing it. I think I'm going to bring a stack of books and try to read, like, a book a week the time I'm up there and try to read, like, six or seven books. I have a, I have a list of books I've been trying to read for, like, two years, and I, my, my stupid lazy self has not gotten around to it. <laughs> so I think this is my this is my best opportunity to uh, get around to it. All right, a lot of busy intersections in Utana today. It's taken a long time to get through this town. 
which is kind of annoying. Kind of just a small little town, too, with some high-rise apartments in the back. Still enjoying, enjoying this area's scenery, I guess the other piece of news to update you on is that Washington State is getting closer and closer for American Truck Sim. I think it's going to come out, hopefully, before the end of May, because I would like to start my American Truck Sim series. At least get one episode in before I go to Alaska. Or maybe not. Maybe I want to actually, you know what, now that I think it through, or talk it through, it'd be better to wait till I'm back. That way I don't have one episode and then wait three months for the next. So we'll start that in the fall. That'll officially start in the fall, which I'm looking forward to that. In the next region, they've already given some teasers on this. I think it's going to be the Balkan Peninsula. So countries like Bosnia and Serbia, Montenegro, kind of all those areas. Croatia, which I'm looking forward to. I heard Croatia's beautiful, so that'll be a fun place to drive to once I get there, obviously. But we will... Uh, get there when the time is right. For now, we still have to explore this part of the map and then still get down to Italy and France, which I think after this delivery, I'm going to start heading south. I'm going to start heading south to get down there because I think we've pretty much seen most of this part of the map. We haven't seen every city, but we don't need to see every city. I mean, we'd have to go all the way back up to Finland to do that at that point. So, I mean, I think eventually my goal will be to see every city in the map. But uh, I think I think right now... If I can at least get to all the regions, then kind of just revisit them and polish up the cities that I haven't been to. I think that will probably be the right thing to do. I don't know. We have a decent amount of cities left in here, so that that could be something I figure out as we go. But th th that's the other big news about uh, American Truck Sim and Euro Truck Sim. Not much new else is out in the gaming community, at least the games that I mostly play, uh, aside from, you know, obviously MOB19 releasing. They announced that the F1 game is going to come out in June this year, which I'm kind of ticked about because I'm not going to be here for that. Usually that comes out in August. I think I'll start playing that once I get back in the fall and kind of, you know, get back to normal with that. Slow down for this village. Down to 50. Whoa. A little bit of a, a weird lag there by my uh, track IR. So I guess I will start the story about my spring break. <laughs> where I was in the two weeks that I wasn't uploading. Boy, oh boy, was it an interesting time. I uh, started by going home for a couple days. That was fun. Got to go into Pittsburgh once or twice. Hang out with, went out with my dad once for Vietnamese food. Went out with my mom for uh, sushi. So that was fun. And then uh, I didn't really get to see my sister because she was back at school. Her spring break was the week before mine. Hung out with my brother. We went go-karting one night. That was fun. Then after that, I took a plane to Baltimore and visited my best friend in Baltimore. I just thought that that was a ticket, but luckily that was a loan installment. I was going to say, I don't think I was speeding there. <laughs> but I visited her for a couple days. That was great. But to preface the rest of the story, I slept on her floor. Her bed was not big enough to, you know, it, it wasn't one of those huge beds where two people could share the bed. It was a small bed, so... She slept on the bed, and I uh, slept on a comforter with a blanket on the floor, which was not very comfortable. But I got, you know, okay sleep, probably five, six hours at night. It kind of sucked. But after that, I uh, took the... Well, I guess I'll talk about what I did in Baltimore a little bit, because I've never been to Baltimore before. Got to take the um, light rail from the airport into the town, so that was fun. It was probably the worst public transit system I've ever seen, though. <laughs> because literally the train was so, so ridiculously slow. The cars were beat up. And some of the areas I went through, my goodness, I would say they were easily the dodgiest areas I've ever been in in my life. Baltimore definitely lived up to its reputation. Even near the downtown, there are some areas that are just, you can just tell it is not a good area. You can tell from the buildings, they're all boarded up. There's they're, half them are, 75% of them in this neighborhood that's probably right next to downtown are vacant. And I've, you know, I've seen parts of Pittsburgh that are run down, but I've never seen anything like this. And to consider how close it was to downtown, and right on a light rail track, normally places along public transport do pretty well. Not this place. It was unlike anything I'd ever seen in my life before, to be honest. It was, it was very bad. But Baltimore also had some really quaint and charming little areas. Baltimore's called the called the Charm City, and I think it lived up to its name. 
There's a lot of uh, quaint little neighborhoods that we went to. We went to this place called Hampton. We went to another neighborhood called Fells Point. Both of those were really nice. I really liked Hampton. It was kind of like a kind of like a hipster neighborhood a little bit, I guess you could say. But a lot of good restaurants. A lot of uh, little ice, a really good little ice cream shop that we went to called the Charmery. Probably one of the best ice cream shops I've ever been to, to be honest, if not the best. So I, I, I would say I liked Baltimore. I liked the feel of the city. I, I kind of liked the, uh, you know, the, the, the mood and the vibe that you get there. It was just you got to be a little careful of where you go because you walk two blocks too far and it's, uh, you're, you know, it's a little bit dodgy. I mean, I'm sure the more time you spend in the city, you get used to it. I'm used to, I'm used to living in small town for the last four years where, you know, not too much happens. I mean, there is some crime in Athens, but it's very low. So I'm used to feeling safe everywhere, and uh, it's a little bit different when you go to a city like that and you know that the chance of something happening is higher. But, you know, my I was talking to my friend about that, and, and she said very wisely, you know, you shouldn't be too scared to still go explore the city a little bit, right? I mean, obviously, if, if your gut tells you to get out of somewhere, get out. But, you know, don't just stay inside all day and stay in your comfort zone because, you know... The city's only going to get better if we give it a chance and if we invest in it, right? So I think that's kind of a good mindset to have. First, to obviously not be judgmental of anyone, which is, you know, I, I, I'm, more, I'm more looking at the city as a whole rather than the individuals. But um, also to, you know, not, not be afraid to go out of your comfort zone a little bit and, you know, just kind of test it out, right? Because sometimes it might not be as bad as you think. And I would say, after like a couple days of being there, I started feeling a little bit better, but still, I mean, it, there. I would say if I lived there, there would definitely be some areas that, you know, some blocks I was on that I really didn't have an interest in returning to just because it, it was quite dodgy. And um, I don't know, that's just my feeling on it. But overall, I mean, there were a lot of things I liked about Baltimore too. And I definitely want to go back. I definitely, you know, I feel like you got to go to a place at least twice to really get a feel. Speaking of going to a place just once, Kaunas is discovered. So another city for us here, the Baltics. Go ahead and uh, enter the Cité here. But the second day we were there, we drove, rented a car, drove down to Annapolis, Maryland, which was a wonderful, quaint little town. Very historic, absolutely beautiful little shops, little restaurants. It was St. Patrick's Day, so we had dinner at a little Irish pub restaurant, which was fantastic. Got the drink a Guinness, which is ironically the beer that I'm drinking right now. There, just take another sip of it. <laughs> I'm, I guess I'm, I'm drinking and driving on this game, which is not, which is not a smart idea. Don't, don't, don't listen to uh, what people on YouTube do. Don't, don't drink and drive. Don't drink and drive in real life. If you want to go drink and drive on a video game, that's, that's fine, but don't do it in real life because that, that is stupid. <laughs> But uh, I actually, I think I've, I've played this game while intoxicated once, just to see how I did. And I, I, I guess I wasn't all as that intoxicated because I was driving fine. I recorded it, played it back the next day, and I was driving just fine. So I, I guess I was only a little intoxicated. But still, don't, don't, don't do that and then think you can do it in real life. Because D, DUI is not something to mess around with. And killing somebody is not something that you want to do either. I would say do the things that are going to save lives rather than put them in danger just don't just take my word don't drink and drive now now i'm cleared from lawsuits when one of my when one of my youtube watchers decides to do it because i'm doing it on the video <laughs> Nah, i'm kind of just kidding kind of but anyway we went to annapolis had dinner at a little irish pub that was a great little town kind of just walked around for the day i think it was like 75 degrees that day which was crazy warm for march but uh, it was kind of nice to have some warm weather. I'm getting a little sick of winter. I love winter, but I'm getting a little sick of it. After that, we uh, kind of just explored more of Baltimore and uh, explored our campus. I did a, I, I hosted a radio show, which was really fun. I did an hour of music, which was something I've never done before. I've done a lot of YouTube videos before, and I've done a political talk show before, but I've never done an hour of music hosting. So that was that was a new that was a new media experience for me which was really exciting. I always like to, you know, expand my expand my media horizons. Which is also why I'm doing photo shoots for our magazine on campus this year, if I haven't mentioned. I guess I'll talk about that another time. 
Alright, let's go ahead and make this delivery, and then we will pick our next one and continue the rest of the story. Because I haven't even gotten to the juicy stuff yet. Alrighty. What do I want to do here? I think I'm going to turn this thing around. Yep. Aero Baltica. Alright, let's straighten this out. Alright, and into a reverso. Alright, we want to go... Okay, which side of that... Okay, we're on the close side of that trailer, so we want to just remember that we're on the close side of that trailer. Let's kind of bring it out a little more this way. We're not there yet. The key is to slowly do this. You know I have a tendency to do it too fast. So just very slowly, very, very slowly do it. All right, I think this is my turn in point here. So just kind of start turning it in. Kind of straighten it out a little bit here. Nice and slow, nice and easy. We're clear on this side. Clear of that truck. All right, just turn it a little bit more. Nice and easy, nice and easy. All right, we gotta go a little bit more here because it's still not back. All right, now let's start straightening it out. It should be, by the time the truck catches up with the trailer, it should be in there perfectly. All right, we overdid it just a little bit, but that's okay. We're clear on this other side. Kind of correct a little, straighten it out. And nudge it. All right, it's in the green. Let's kind of just fix it up a little bit here. Pull on out. We gotta just move to the right a little bit. All right, it's so hard to it's so hard to see in these mirrors, especially when you got sensitive track IR that's moving you around so much. All right, now if we just straighten that. That should be perfect. All right, see so you guys. I'm getting, I'm getting better. Park and brake on, engine off. Let's go ahead and unload the trailer. Five hours and thirty minutes, two hundred forty-one kilometers, hundred and one point five liters of fuel, and let's see what the company has in terms of job offers. All right, Kaunas, where do we want to go? We can go to Riga, Valmiera, Paldeski, Bialystok, Sweden, Lithuania, Klaipeda, Katowice, Poland, or Riga. Have I been to this city yet, Panevskis? I don't think I have. I don't think so. That's kind of a risk. I don't want to go to the same city twice. But it's also a really short one because a lot of these are long and I don't want to have a too long. I know this will take forever going down to there. I just have, I just know, I don't know why I think, I, why do I know that? I don't know that. What am I saying to myself? But that's four hours 50. This one's only three. That's 247, but I've been to Klaipeda. So that would kind of just be, I've done Vilnius to Klaipeda. So that would kind of just be a route that I've already done. Let's let's see if I've been to Penevsky's. When's it due in the first place though? It, it's 223. We should be good with resting. So let's go ahead and take this job. We can always cancel it. Cargo's been loaded. Next rest stop is uh, three hours 20 and there's three hours five left in the delivery. So that's perfect. What are these shadows doing? Those things are spazzing out. Spazzing out. All right, have I been to the city? Please to, ah, perfect, I have not. So, took a gamble and it worked. So that was my gut feeling that I had not been to that city. Let's go ahead and get back, <coughs> excuse me, start head. And as I always say, head on out of here for delivery number two of the episode. All right, goodbye BLT. What are we even hauling? 22 tons of precast stairs. That's interesting. Maybe some construction site up at the GNT. Due by 2100 hours, so we will just get in before our rest stop is due, which will literally be perfect, because I can rest after that before the next episode, so that'll actually work out just fine. All right, so continuing with the spring break story, the horror story, we haven't even gotten to that yet. Trust me, this video, this video has really not even gotten to the half as interesting part as it's about to get. <laughs> so I took the Amtrak from Baltimore to New York City afterwards, which was awesome. I've talked about how I've taken the Amtrak before and I love it. I think I like train travel even more than I do on a plane. 
It's just so luxurious. Even though it's not even a first class seat, it's just a regular seat. It's not, it's a lot less cheaper than flying, but the seats are wide, they're comfortable, they're leather. They're just fantastic. And the other thing is, like it's only two and two across versus three and three on a plane. And you don't have to, have, there's no, I, I, are there even, I don't even think there's seat belts, so you don't have to worry about being seated. You can get up, walk around at any point, even when you're coming into the station, which is super nice. And you just kind of throw your stuff above you. There's, you don't have to worry about checking a bag. You can just, if you got big bag, there's like a little place that you can put it in. If you got a, a little bag, you can just put it on the overhead compartment or put it on your, under your seat. It's really fantastic. For half the ride, I had someone next to me until Philadelphia, and then he got off at Philadelphia, and then I had no one next to me for the rest of the trip, which was really, really nice. I uh, was happy to have like a seat to myself, or a whole row to myself, which is not something you get all the time. So so I would say that train travel is a great way to travel, but probably the mo most luxurious thing about it, I mean, aside from also not having to go through security, shall I mention, we walked to the, I walked to the train station because my friend's uh, college is very close to it, which is awesome. And then I just, you know, got on the train. I went down, the train pulled up. I got on, the train was literally moving before I even got my seat. That's how quick they'd go through these stations. And then next thing you know, we're at 120 miles an hour hopping towards Wilmington, Delaware. And it's also cool seeing it stop at different cities. It's a great way to see different areas because, you know, I got to see Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey. You kind of get to be on the ground and just, it's like, it's like taking a road trip without having to drive and much more comfortable than a car. But the thing that made me feel the most luxurious about the Amtrak, without a doubt, was going to the cafe car. All I got was a bagel with cream cheese. It was just a regular bagel that they heated up in a microwave and gave me some Philadelphia cream cheese. Nothing fancy, literally the lowest of low end breakfast. Why did the sky just change? What was that? One of my mods is probably conflicting or something like that. I'm gonna have to check up on that one. But anyway, <laughs> it was absolutely amazing just going to the cafe car and literally just ordering a snack while you're on the train. It, it just feels like such an old-fashioned, luxurious thing to do. And it, I just thought it was really cool. Even though I didn't get anything fancy, didn't get any drinks, just, just a simple breakfast. And, and, I, and it, just felt, it just felt like how it was in the olden days. And I, I think it made me, I always talk about, I think I've talked about on here before, how I really want to see the United States have a proper high-speed rail system like in China and Europe. Taking Amtrak just makes me want to do it even more. The other nice thing is it dropped me off at Penn Station, which is literally right in the middle of Manhattan. You don't have to get a taxi in from the airport. You're just there. So that was great. I dropped my bags off at a place Amtrak held them for the day, which is a nice service that they have. And then I met my speech and debate team in the middle of Manhattan. We went out to lunch, and I spent the rest of the day exploring Manhattan, which was awesome. I got to uh, Greenwich Village, went record shopping, saw some of the famous sites where like Bob Dylan and a bunch of the other 60s artists got their career started. Bought a couple records there, which adds to my collection of those that I bought in Baltimore, so I had a lot to carry around. <laughs> but uh, then I walked from Greenwich Village a mile and a half down to the World Trade Center. Went to this place called Italy that my sister recommended, got a uh, espresso there, and just kind of explore the area a little bit. And then I took the subway back up to Times Square, got dinner with my team, and then that was it. We uh, took the Long Island Railroad out to our hotel, and I had a hotel bed to myself, which was the first good night's sleep I had in five nights, which was good. So the next day was just a practice day, and it ended up being a waste of a, t of a day. We, I honestly wish I could have gone back into the city that day, because we didn't do anything valuable until about 5 p.m. But... Uh, <laughs> That's kind of what happened with that, but then this guy showed up, and he was going to be our assistant coach for the weekend, essentially. He was going to help us, and I had to have a room with him, which usually I don't mind sharing rooms with other people, as long as they fit my two qualities. Number one, they're not disgusting. Number two, they're not noisy. Well, this guy was both. So first off, I try to talk to him, and he's extremely antisocial. And just, you know, not I, I, I tried to ask him about his life, his job, and he just wasn't answering questions. So then I go to go to sleep, and I hear... And I'm like, oh my goodness, this, this guy snores. <laughs> this guy snores. So I was not happy about that at all. But, you know, 
I wasn't getting a angry at him because, you know, it's not fair to get angry at him. It's not his fault. He might not even know he's doing it. So, I mean, you know, I was trying really hard to just, you know, I was angry at the situation rather than angry at him because, you know, I'm obviously not trying to blame him for that. But it is frustrating, and I have a right to be upset at the situation. So I had to put my noise-canceling headphones on and sleep with those, <laughs> which means I woke up a bunch of times in the middle of the night because noise-canceling headphones aren't exactly, you know, comfortable to sleep in. So that, that kind of sucked, having to deal with that, um, sleeping with big, big headphones on. They were the ones that go around your ears. They weren't even the little earbuds. They were full-on headphones. So that really sucked. And then the next day during the tournament, well, first off, he wakes up the next morning, and he starts coughing up a storm in the bathroom. I didn't know if he was choking or if he was throwing up sick. It just sounded terrible. So... I asked him when he comes out of the bathroom, I'm like, hey man, you okay? And he's like, I'm fine. Very rudely, he's like, I'm fine. And then I'm like, alright, just, just checking. You know, because I thought he was possibly sick or, you know, who knows what was going on. I just wanted to make sure he was okay, right? That's a normal thing to do to another human being if you suspect they might be in any sort of physical danger. So, you know, he said he was okay. And... Then we went to the tournament, and he was extremely patronizing to the entire team. He didn't coach us. He just told us exactly what to do, which was extremely frustrating, just having him basically demand us what to do. The one debate the next day that he told me to do a certain strategy, I, I listened exactly to what he said, and, oh my goodness, next rest stop in 146, and we have 146 to get there, so let's, let's try to speed this up and not be late. But anyway... Uh, I lost. I won four of my six debates, and one of the ones I lost was one that I listened to him. So he's extremely patronizing, guaranteeing that we'll win if we listen to him, because he's, quote, so experienced, and then uh, we end up losing. So that is incredibly frustrating uh, to have that happen. But the worst part of the story <sighs> hasn't even come yet. So I'm already, like, up to here with this guy. I've had it. And uh, then we get to the hotel. This is Friday night. And uh, I wake up on Saturday morning, he's in the bathroom, he takes a shower, and he does the coughing thing again. I walk into the bathroom to, you know, get ready in the morning. And first off, he, the, the bathroom was basically 200 degrees inside. I mean, it had to be at least 100 and... I don't know, 110 degrees in, in the bathroom. It was extremely hot because he took the most ridiculously... Whoa! I just got cut off by a cop! Wow! Wow, buddy, and then he has the nerve to get it to the other lane. I'm gonna write you a ticket, boy. Wow, that was unexpected. He's gonna make me late. Anyway, that was frustrating. But I walk into the bathroom, it's extremely hot, and I had to, like, go out of the bathroom because I'm like, I literally can't even breathe in this because it's so hot. I go back in the bathroom, and I see that he, like, threw up on the toilet. And it was on the seat. And this, this dude doesn't even bother to clean it up. So, of course, my first worry goes to, like, you know, I swear to God, if I get sick because of this, I'm going to be rightfully ticked, right? Because, you know, if I if, if I get sick because he, you know, had germs and he didn't go home, I'm going to be really upset. But it goes to find out, I also find a cigarette butt on the floor. So I'm like, maybe he, you know, the smoking is what making him sick. So it turns out that, um... He apparently smelled like marijuana the entire time to my teammates, and he was probably smoking weed, and apparently that makes some people throw up when they do it. That's what I'm hoping it was. I also coincidentally um, kind of felt tired the last couple days. I think it could just be from worn out, wear, being worn out from the whole trip, but I was so tired. Like, last night I slept like 10 hours and woke up still really tired to my alarm, so like, I don't know what's been up. I feel okay now. I'm starting to feel a little better, but... It's been kind of frustrating, and, and it's been kind of worrying, because I didn't want to get sick from this dude. Luckily, I've been eating okay, and I feel like I would have gotten more sick at this point. So I think I dodged a bullet. Don't want to, don't wanna, you know, jinx anything, but I think I dodged a bullet. And um, basically, I was just, at that point, I was so upset, so frustrated, that it caused me to completely screw up my one event in the morning, which luckily I didn't place in that event anyway, but maybe that's why. Maybe that's why I didn't have such a good final result, because of that, so... I don't know. It was extremely upsetting and uh, just a terrible roommate story, right? I guess we all have those... A lot of people have those horror roommate stories. I'm running out of fuel. Yeah, I know. I have 460 kilometers left. 
so I will fill up when I get to my next destination. But anyway, uh, e extremely frustrating and just extremely rude of him. So the rest of my events went okay. I ended up getting an excellent award in debate because I still won four of my six debates. Probably would have done better if I won five. I might have even made it to the final eight. So that's that's kind of extremely you know frustrating. But you know I still won something. And then in my impromptu speaking, I won excellence and which is top thirty percent in the nation, or in the tournament. And of course, it's a nationwide tournament. But the coolest thing about that is that I was only two people away from being superior, which is top ten percent. So I was in my third ever college tournament on a national, it was a national tournament, and I got the top 12% at impromptu speaking, which is an event where they give you a quote, and you have two minutes to write a speech on that quote, and then you've got to give a five-minute speech. It's very difficult, so it's just something I'm good at. I'm good at rambling. That's why I do these YouTube videos, because I'm good at rambling. <laughs> so, um, you know... Oh my god, that guy, did that guy just flash his brights because I had my brights on? I think he started to for a minute. If that was the case, that was genius. But anyway, that's kind of how it happened. I was very happy to get that award. My coach, you know, was what still thought that that result was very good considering um, what I had to deal with and considering that more than anything, I'm so new to speech and debate. So I'm happy with how it went. That's the last tournament of the year. I will have more next year, which I'm really excited for. I cannot wait. I really want to contend for the national championship on the impromptu speaking because I really think I can. I, I gave, you know, I two of my three speeches were number ones. So basically it's us versus four other people in the round. And I got a one, a four, and a one. So, I mean, I don't know how the four was so bad, but if I could just get all ones, then, I mean, you get all ones, you're going to win the national championship probably. So, like, you know, that's pretty exciting stuff right there. And, um... All right, 11 minutes, seven, seven minutes until rest, so we just got to hurry up and get here. But I was pretty stoked about uh, how that ended up working out in terms of final results. I mean, I was disappointed my extemporaneous speaking event didn't get an award because I thought it was worthy. And, like, the last speech, Panevskis discovered Baltic Tours 24, 35. We are getting there. I'm kind of thinking we should just complete the Baltic regions. Do these people, what are you doing, buddy? I don't know what you doing out here. I'm kind of thinking we should just complete all of them before we continue on, because there's not really that much left. But anyway, guys, that's kind of how the speech and debate tournament went. It was a crazy story. Horrible roommate story. Never have dealt with anything like that, and hopefully never again. Hopefully I'll just share rooms with... Uh... There's another guy doing debate next year, and I've met him, and he seems really nice. So as long as he's not disgusting and loud, I think I'll be okay sharing a bedroom with him. Luckily, we'll each get our own bed as well, which will be really nice. So I'm, you know, I feel a little bit relieved that uh, it'll end up, it'll end up working out next year, and I won't have to ever, sleep. I'll never have to see that guy again in my life. And if I do, I will either turn the other way or give him a dirty glare because I, you know, it takes a lot to really make me hate you. But this guy made me full on hate him after just knowing him for a couple days. And, you know, I don't, I wouldn't say I deeply hate a lot of people. There's probably less than five people I know personally who I have ever truly despised. And he got himself on that list. So he's lucky I'm not saying his name in the video because he was a despicable, despicable person just the entire time. And then I didn't even tell the best part of the story. My goodness, I'm going to tell it as I back this truck in. So it's the last, it's the last night. And in the last morning when I left, he wasn't even out of bed when I left yet, so luckily I didn't have to worry about him. But uh, it's it's the last it's the last night, and he says to me, he goes, "Hey, avoid sleeping violation, Jesus! No, the cops came after me for that. No, there goes almost all the money I made from this trip. Oh, jeez. Well, we hardly made any money today. There goes uh, there's another disastrous event in this video. Oh my goodness. But anyway, to finish the story." He says, this guy says to me, he goes, hey, have you ever been to a therapist? And I say to him, I'm like, no, why? And he's like, well, I think you should. And I'm like, you know, why is that? I don't, I don't have depression or anything. I don't suffer from mental health issues or sickness. And he goes, yeah, like, that's exactly why you should go. Because a lot of times people are dealing with things in their life they don't know they are. And, and at this point, I'm still like, all right, like, that's a fair point. I mean, we all deal with stuff, right? And it's never bad to have someone anonymous to talk to about our struggles. So at this point, I'm still kind of, like, respecting him. But then he says to me, he goes, you know, have you ever been tested for the autism spectrum? And I'm like, 
Oh my god, another ticket? I gotta get to a rest stop. This is this is bad. There goes all my money. But anyway, he's like, have you ever been tested for the autism spectrum? And I go, no, I've never... You know, I, I don't fit that. And he goes, yeah, well, I think from getting to know you, because we've really had a chance to bond. Keep in mind, this guy hardly knows me at this point. He still has hardly said a word to me. But he thinks we've had a great chance to bond, which is absolutely freaking hilarious. But he says to me, he's like, I think you might meet the spectrum. And he basically went on this tangent about why he thinks I'm on the spectrum. And then he started asking me questions to try to fill his narrative. All of which I answered the opposite of what he was going to expect. And he's like, well, maybe I'm totally wrong about the entire thing. So I, I, I took this test about the, the spectrum, and, and I think of, like, the 11 main symptoms. I only matched with one, which is that I sometimes get nervous tics. Which, literally, probably 90% of you watching get a tic from time to time. It's just a thing people do. So I'm not on the spectrum. The guy was a complete jerk. That's kind of the end of that story. And guys, I would, ta I would ramble more on, but that is the end of the video. Let's get our next job offer. Make sure it's one where we can sleep, because I just lost 300 bucks, which is essentially everything I made in this episode. Rezekni, we've been there. We've been to Vilnius. We haven't been to Lublin. Valmiera. Leopaya, we've been to. Okay, so we've been to all of the cities. <sighs> so the question is, do I want to explore the rest of this area? I'm going to say no, because it's going to take... 24 out of 36, we still got 12 more, and that's going to take at least like 10 videos, which is, I don't know, I feel like we gotta, we can literally get down here, do all of that, kind of explore those areas before the end of the semester, before summer, that's the goal. I mean, I've been to all the countries, so I think we should take this 12-hour one. When's it due, though? So, it's Friday. It's not even due until Sunday. So, like, we'll sleep, we'll drive most of the day on Saturday. We'll sleep a little bit, and we'll get there early Sunday morning. That should work just fine. So I think I think this is the one. 17 tons of almonds, 1,139 euros to Katowice, Poland. Let's take it. Oh, and it's raining too. That Guys, is going to be it for this episode. I am going to find a place to rest and rest, and we'll start the next episode all rested and filled up. For now, we'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed. Peace.